It seems like even some of Alex's family is beginning to question what really happened that night that Maggie and Paul lost their life. We're also going to talk about the repercussions of having to been part of this case for other people. And we're going to do that in this video right now. Hello everybody and welcome back to the sofa. That's the sofa behind me with our mascot Mr. Roscoe P. Coltrane holding it down back there. And my name is Paul. Thank you for joining. Today we're going to be talking about just a few updates and a few things to comment on. Um, one of those being what Alex's brother has come out saying. Also some things that have taken place with the egg juror, the defense, Buster, that type of thing. Um, and so that's it. So let's go ahead and jump into it. What we'll do is for this video I, we are going to watch like one news clip and then uh, other things I'm going to put uh, screenshots of news articles on the screen and we'll reference the uh, the most interesting parts of those that I want to cover. I'm here, curious to see what you have to say about it down in the comment section so just drop it like it's hot down there and let's start now. Okay, so the first article is from The Independent, and it's by Oliver O'Connell and Rachel Sharp, and it's titled, Alex Murdoch Trial Live, Killer's Attorney Reveals Hate Mail Over Cases, Egg Juror Asked to Be Left Alone. So let's hear what the defense team had to say first. So it says that Alec Murdoch's defense attorney has revealed he has received hate mail after representing the now convicted killer in the, his high profile uh, murder trial. Dick Harputlian, uh, better known as Poot, who is also a state senator, spoke about the case on the South Carolina Senate floor on Tuesday. He claimed he had been sent messages from people calling him a piece of scum or hoping that he dies of rectal cancer. Hey, now I'm going to have to just say the rectal cancer thing feels very personal. It also is very specific, right? I'm just like, that's inventive. So, you know, here's the thing. A lot of times in these cases, whether the defense is liked, not liked, or whatever, which, I mean, let's be honest, I get a lot of people, you know, didn't really care for old poot. Um, but they receive this backlash, especially when it's something such as, you know, someone like Alex or Jody Arias or people like this, right? Um, it, it is what it is, and I do feel bad for that part. Now, what also ends up happening is these people, and what I mean by that are the defense uh, attorneys, oftentimes become, you know, extensions of their clients. And you remember in the beginning of this trial, old poot was like, um, you know, hey, you know, I might basically, I forget how he said it, but he was basically like, I might say things, you know, upset you, but don't let that, you know, re don't reflect that back on Alec, you know, reflect it on me. And he definitely lived up to that. So, you know, I'm sorry he's receiving these kind of things. I mean, that's, you know, not really fair or whatever. Um, but yeah, we'll see how that one pans out. I imagine this is just going to be how it goes. I mean, for God's sakes, the man's a senator, right? So he probably already gets stuff like this. You know what I'm saying? It's probably just tuned up more. And now that people know, you know, it's like, okay, he, you know, represented him in the uh, defense state senator. It's probably not going to bode well for him, but we'll see how that pans out. Now let's move on to some other exciting news. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. All right. So let me put the thing up on the screen here. So Anjanette Levy has retweeted out a tweet from uh, Pretty Lies and Alibis, uh, Gigi. Now also, before we even get into it, if you don't follow Pretty Lies and Alibis, Gigi, uh, make sure you follow her not only on Twitter, but also YouTube. She has a great channel. And she was at the trial. She was holding it down every single day. Hat is off to you, girl. So be sure and check her uh, all her stuff out. Now she, in this tweet, as you can see, has uh, issued out, you know, she's retweeting they are tweeting out the statement for the press uh, and this comes from some local or Columbia local at least uh, attorneys and they are uh, talking on behalf of who has become known as the egg juror now if you are not familiar with this towards the end a juror was excused uh, it looked like she had been talking to some sled agents and whatnot and when she was leaving and asked if she had stuff in the room she was like I I've got some eggs I want to get now it turns out it sounds like that these were some farm eggs and another juror brought but girl won't leave him without her eggs and i don't blame her y'all have seen the price of eggs at the store okay 
get your bag girl anyways they were basically putting out a thing and you can see it on the screen pause to read if you've not already read it um, but they are requesting that everyone respect her privacy at both her home and her place of work while other jurors have chosen to comment which is their prerogative that is not her desire at this time given her public service for the weeks of trial she earned through her public service the right to have her wishes respected she wishes you to know that she took the juror oath and all the subsequent court's instructions seriously and believes she followed them appropriately she now wishes freedom from contact and harassment and requests that efforts to contact her at her home or work come to an immediate end in that regard we have requested the assistance of the uh, uh, Culleton County Sheriff's Department all further questions can be directed to my office now here's my thing leave the, the, the woman alone for Lord's sakes I mean I agree with this she did her thing she doesn't want to come forward there's no reason for her to come forward we've gotten the tea from the other jurors right I mean yes it was funny I'm sure people want to know is she the same person who was allegedly dozing off or doing this or doing the things in her ears and all this kind of stuff right I mean I don't know if you know drop it in the comments but regardless she did her duty she got her eggs and she moved on her way. I would have fallen off the damn sofa if the statement ended with some comment on, and yes, the eggs were good. Or, you know, whatever, right? <laughs> because I think that's what every, everybody's like, these must be some damn good eggs, right? So, bless her heart, she was embarrassed on national TV, right? Having to leave. But, you know, again, my hat's off to her. She got her eggs, she did her thing, and she left. So, kudos to you. Now, next, let's look at this news clip about Buster and uh, some charges that he has filed. Rock's son claiming that after his father's trial, someone has been following him and taking pictures of him and his girlfriend. According to a report by the Beaufort County Sheriff's Office, yesterday after seeing a picture of himself inside of his home in the New York Post, Buster reviewed video from a Ring doorbell camera. He says he saw a suspicious car parked outside of his home. The Beaufort County Sheriff's Office says that car was a gray Dodge Challenger, but there was no other identifiable information in the video. Now, here's one thing that I always think about with like the anomaly of like fame and whatnot like and this speaks to like say the movie people who are like intentionally famous right like musicians artists uh actresses actors people like that um when they're stalked by the paparazzi and stuff and i'm like oh my god that is so not worth it well then when you get into like infamous people who didn't really mean to become famous and i'm sitting here thinking I'm like what would i do if i opened up the paper or the art or whatever i'm you got, i'm aging myself right uh or if i turned on the computer and saw like a picture of me in my house i would be like oh my god right here's my thing with buster um you know i i feel both ways towards him because i'm very curious like sitting back here with my popcorn to see what legal stuff comes down the pipeline towards him right we still have the stephen smith thing and unfortunately for him his father has left him in quite the pickle this boy will probably be dealing with legal matters for most of his life from here on out because of his father not even getting into the maggie and paul situation just the financial crimes alone right and so there's that now this again is excluding if there was i do not know if he was involved with the stephen smith thing that's all alleged at this point but i know a lot of people you know, a lot goes on around about that right so we're just going to see what happens with that at this point we don't know um that being said honestly if i was him and again, I try and put myself in the shoes of the person because I'm like, my first reaction is he just needs to move, change his name and move, right? Uh, he's a pretty recognizable person. To me, he looks exactly like his father. Um, you know, I just think that he would be easily recognizable. He has that bright red hair, hard to change his appearance, so on and so forth. So my thought process of oh just pack up change your name and move what well, might not be that easy to basically do a witness relocation thing but then also it's like okay you've lost everybody you've lost your mother your brother your father you know this is where you grew up this is your home this is your comfort zone you know but how do you basically go about showing your face in a town like this again after all of this has gone over it's quite the predicament and of course this is on the assumption that no legal problems will come his way in regard to him being personally involved with anything whether it's financial or the stephen smith situation or things of that nature so i'm going to be curious to see because he is going to have to i mean do something right because especially right now it's such a hot topic and there's so much unfinished business with it 
it, if that makes sense. And let's use that as a little bit of a segue, you see what I did there, to talk about the final article. Okay, this one had me going a little bit. So Alec Murdoch's brother says convicted murderer knows more than what he's saying about the killings. Uh, this is in People Magazine. It was by Corin Cesarek. I hope I'm saying his name right. And let's just talk about some highlights of this. Now you can pause to read if you want to. Um, and so Randy Murdoch, he spoke out. This is originally he spoke out with New York Times in an article um, at his South Carolina hunting property. And he acknowledged that his brother Alex has lied and stolen from his former clients. And Randy is still unsure if Alex committed the brutal 2021 murders of his 52-year-old wife and 22-year-old son. However, Randy did say he doesn't believe his brother is telling the whole truth. And now they're going to quote him. It says he knows more than what he's saying, Randy told the New York Times. He's not telling the truth, in my opinion, about everything there. Now, the article goes on to say that Randy did not testify in Alex's defense, and he did not attend each day of the lengthy trial, but even with the trial over, Randy still wrestles with many questions about Alex. The not knowing is the worst thing there is, Randy told the Times. Now, the article goes on to say that in a statement previously obtained by People in 2021, about three months after the double murder, Randy acknowledged Alex's alleged financial crimes at the family law firm, writing, I was shocked, just as the rest of my law firm family, to learn of my brother Alex's drug addiction and stealing of money. I love my law firm family and also love Alex as my brother. While I will support him in his recovery, I do not support, condone, or excuse his conduct in stealing by manipulating his most trusted relationships. Alex resigned from the firm, Peters Murdoch, Parker Alzeroth, and Dietrich PA, PM, PED, after he was shot on September 4th, 2021. We all know how that panned out. Um, and it was later discovered that the shooting was a you-know-what-for-hire plot that Alex concocted in order for his surviving son Buster to claim a hefty life insurance policy, according to Alex's lawyer, oh poot. Now, on January 4th, 2022, the law firm announced that they were renaming itself Parker Law Group. Obviously, this is when they were ditching him. Uh, Randy still works for the firm and has taken on some of Alex's former clients and says he's practicing law the right way. Randy also told the times that he tells his clients, listen, I'm not him. I'm doing things the right way, always have. Okay, now this brings up a huge thing that I'm always very fascinated in with true crime. And that is, what do you do in scenarios like this when your loved one or acquaintance or whoever it is like you're close to the accused, the convicted, who has done this, that they're still proclaiming their innocence. And, you know, there's so much going on that's like what, what really happened. And like Randy said, it's the not knowing. Because even though there is a conviction, and there's two ways you can go with this, right? You either think that Alec did it. Well, there's many ways, actually. I shouldn't even say that, right? You either think that Alec did it all on his own, and the, he got convicted. And so then it's like the, well, it's so senseless, and why? But where's the money and all the stuff that goes behind it. You either think that Alex did it with someone else helping him, whether it was clean up or do the crimes or whatever. Well, then of course the obvious questions, how did they do it? Who was it? Yada, yada, yada. Or he hired someone. He didn't pull the trigger, but he was there with them. All those questions. Or he hired somebody and wasn't there. Or altogether, he didn't do it. I mean, you see where I'm going with this. There feels like so much unfinished business with this case. But at the end of the day, that doesn't bring any of the victims back, right? And that's the unfortunate part. I was very interested to hear from one of the brothers. You know, to hear, you know what? It doesn't sound like he's telling the truth. Because it's hard to admit that he would be. And I also think it's interesting that this brother was not there on every day of the uh, hearings while his other brother was and even did testify. Now, Randy will go on to say, you know what, I probably didn't serve either for the defense or the prosecution, like he wouldn't have been a good witness for either, so that's why he was never called, but that was his, you know, speculation or whatever. Um, and, and so I think this is interesting. I think we'll see more of this coming out. Now, also for Randy, there has to be some damage control, right? He's going to have to separate himself from that last name. It, it's it's not a cute look at this point. It's a shame to see what someone started generations and generations and generations ago that, you know, you never know when it started off with the first Murdoch, right? What the, he didn't know this many generations down that this would become this. No one wants to see their family name destroyed by their own family, right? And the corruption and all the, the entitlement and all the stuff that went down with it, right? Nobody wants to have that happen, I would at least hope. So 
Randy's gonna have to separate himself, especially continuing to work at this law practice. I mean, can you imagine going in there? Whatever has taken place, and they're like, you're gonna be working with Murdoch, Mr. Murdoch, and you'd be like, um, yeah, the hard pass. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I mean, at this point, it's kinda like, I, uh, you know, and I'm not trying to say anything about Randy because I'm sure he's, you know, not, obviously not ripping the people off like his brother did, right? Or else they would have found this out. You know, but nonetheless, it's still, I mean, it's a big hurdle he's going to have to go over. So there's obviously damage control that's going to have to go on. So there's that. Let me know what you think uh, of everything. What is your opinion? Um, and again, I'll keep following this. Every day something new comes out with this case and I'm just like, oh my gosh, I have to talk about this. So we will continue to follow it. So stay tuned. And next time until we meet around the sofa and the computer and the camera and all this stuff here and Mr. Roscoe. I'll see you soon.